I never knew this when I was a student, but becoming a teacher, this became a game changer for me to be able to help my students remember all of the Pythagorean identities. So to remember all of the Pythagorean identities, it's first important to understand where, how do we start with one Pythagorean identity? So in this case, what I have is the unit circle. The important thing about the unit circle here is that the radius is going to be one and we're gonna have a point here on the unit circle. Now, before going through any kind of values on the unit circle, let's just say we have a random point. Well, we know that we can represent that here as X and as Y, and we're gonna have a right triangle. What's important about this is that it's going to be our X, that is going to be our Y, and this is gonna represent our angle theta. So we know in this case, we have the Pythagorean relationship, X squared plus Y squared is equal to a one. But also one thing we talk about when we're dealing with points that are on the unit circle, when this radius is one, we can also represent this coordinate point as cosine of theta, sine of theta. So by replacing my sine and my cosine with y and x, I now get my first Pythagorean relationship. Okay, so that was the first one I remember. And I remember when I first opened up my textbook and I had to teach Pythagorean identities, I'm like, oh, I remember that one. That one's like, everybody remembers sine squared plus cosine squared equals one, cosine squared plus sine squared equals one. Like, it was just ingrained in my memory. However, if you've ever taken a trig test or you've learned, you know this is not your only Pythagorean identity. And remembering the other ones, unless you're a math teacher or unless you're doing a ton of extra examples, they can be sometimes confusing to like, oh crap, how do I remember these? And when you have a test and you have stress and you maybe are a little bit confused, you might be worried that you might get them wrong because a lot of times they can look very, very similar. And you might think, oh, I can use a Pythagorean identity, but it might be a plus or it might be a minus and it'll mess it all up. So here's a quick, easy way to be able to identify the other Pythagorean identities from this one. All we simply need to do is do two steps, okay? The first step is, oh, I'm sorry, not two steps, but all you need to do to find the other two is just divide by sine and cosine. So let's go ahead and divide everything by cosine first, right? Because if you're gonna keep a, an equation similar, whatever you do on the left-hand side, you have to do on the right-hand side. And when you have expressions separated by addition or subtraction, you gotta make sure you divide by both of them. So I'm going to divide every single term here by cosine, sorry, cosine squared, okay? So cosine squared of theta divided by cosine squared of theta is going to equal one. Sine squared of theta divided by cosine squared of theta is going to equal a tangent squared of theta. And one over cosine squared of theta is gonna equal a secant squared of theta. Ah, that is my other one. Now let's go and look for one more. So let's go ahead and rewrite the Pythagorean identity again. So cosine squared of theta plus sine squared of theta is equal to one. Now, instead of dividing everything by cosine, let's go and divide everything by a sine squared of theta. Okay, so cosine squared of theta divided by sine squared of theta is going to be a cot squared of theta, cotangent. A sine squared of theta divided by sine squared of theta is going to be a one. And a one divided by sine squared of theta is gonna be cosecant squared or the cosecant squared. I don't know, now I messed it up. Cosecant squared of theta. And there you go, ladies and gentlemen, we have one, two, three.